welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to take a quick look at how the AI works. The TAC AI, which is always there, even if you're playing multiplayer, and AI plans, which tell the opposing AI what to do in single player. The TAC AI, or Tactical AI, controls the actions of every single soldier on the map. When troops spot a target, it's their TAC AI that decides whether to engage. When troops take incoming fire, it's the TAC AI that decides if they need to take cover. When you're giving orders to your units, it's the TAC AI that tries to carry out those orders, and because the TAC AI is programmed with self-preservation in mind, it's a key component of combat missions realism. Your troops aren't mindless robots, they want to live, and while they will usually at least try to complete their orders, they have limits, determined by soft factors like experience, motivation, the leadership of local leaders, and how many casualties they or their unit have suffered thus far. Some of the decisions the TAC AI makes are not the best. Whether that's choosing to fire at the wrong weapon, choosing to fire at the wrong target, or, everyone's favourite, fleeing from a relatively safe position to a much more dangerous one and getting destroyed. This somewhat reflects the limits of the tech AI. It's not smart enough to know what a safe position looks like, but to some extent it also reflects human behaviour under stress. People make mistakes too. So that's a quick look at the tech AI, but the tech AI only handles local immediate decisions based on circumstances. It's a dynamic AI. If you leave a unit on its own under its tech AI, it will stay where it is unless it feels the need to run away. So if you're playing the game in single player, your computer opponent needs a bit of help. This is where AI plans come in. These basically act as a kind of stand-in for a human player, with a script of orders that control the computer player's units. In the background here, the red force is the AI, controlled by an AI plan, and the blue force is controlled by a human player. AI planning is somewhat complex. It needs the AI force to be split into groups, each of which is issued instructions that can be activated in sequence at specific timestamps or according to some limited triggers. But when it all comes together well, the results can be quite impressive. There can also be several AI plans per battle, so there's a degree of replayability. The major shortfall of AI plans compared to a human opponent is that the plans tend not to be very reactive to what's going on in the battle. If the AI units are instructed to use a specific avenue of approach, for example, they will keep using it, even if the player turns it into an effective kill zone, and it will be much smarter to try and go somewhere else. This approach also doesn't work particularly well in quick battles, because the AI plan can't know in advance what kind of force it's going to have. The AI groups in a quick battle could be made up of dismounted infantry, or mechanized troops, or armor, or reconnaissance units. So the orders for each group have to be generic, good enough orders, rather than much more effective, tailored instructions. But regardless, a good AI plan can provide a challenge, especially if the scenario designer gives the computer player numerical or soft factor advantages to balance out the human advantage. In some respects, you could argue that playing combat mission in the single player is really playing against the human scenario designer. So that's a really quick once-over of the AI in combat mission. It is a bit of a hybrid system. The TAC AI is always present, and that handles the immediate situation for individual units in a dynamic fashion. In the single player, the scripted AI plan is there to get the enemy doing what the scenario designer wants it to do. It's never going to be as good as a competent human player, but at the same time, it is much quicker to play games against the AI, typically a few hours instead of a few weeks if you're doing play by email, and it's very good for racking up experience of playing the game, getting to grips with different units, and trying things out. In a similar vein, the AI is never going to be a tactical genius, but Combat Mission is a difficult game because it relies on various analog inputs like terrain analysis and tactical judgment that do not translate well into programming. This is a good thing. An AI that can play combat mission well is probably only a couple of steps away from becoming Skynet. Finally, the footage in the background of this video has been from a Shot Force 2 scenario that I made to play around with AI planning. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below if anyone wants to have a go.
Hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope it shed a little bit of light on what's going on under the hood in combat mission. And I'll see you in the next one.